Hey guys, let's get more news about Warriors, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Why Draymond purposely kept emotions in check for Clay's return. On a night when emotions ran high on the Chase Center court and in the crowd, the Warriors' most passionate player did a great job keeping his own feelings in check. Draymond Green put together a typical scoreline that has come to define his brilliant and temperamental career, 11 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals and 2 blocks, all while playing a pivotal role in the Warriors' 120-117 win over Klay Thompson and the Dallas Mavericks on Tuesday. It was Thompson's first game back at Chase Center since leaving the Bay Area basketball dynasty that he helped build and signing a free agent deal with the Mavericks. The always popular Thompson was cheered wildly by the crowd while a pregame tribute video played on the scoreboard above the court and the good feelings for the former Splash brother continued throughout the night. About the only person who didn't get caught up in all the hoopla was Green. We just wanted to win the game, Green said. It wasn't really about Clay. Obviously, with Clay coming back in here, we knew that he'd come in competitive, as he always has been. It wasn't quite good enough today. We weren't out there, a man clays in a different jersey. It is what it is. We had great years here. He's over there trying to do something special, we're here trying to do something special. Once you get in between those lines, all that extra stuff goes out the window. Most of the talk leading up to the game was about the emotions that would be felt by Thompson and Stephen Curry. Those two, along with Green, were the cornerstones when the Dubs won four NBA titles in an eight-year span. Green managed to avoid a lot of that chatter but couldn't get away from it when the day finally came. Even then, the Warriors' four-time All-Star didn't flinch. If I'm totally honest with you, I had zero emotions towards, ah, this is Clay's return, Green said. I did some things to make sure I had zero emotions about it, but it wasn't like I just don't care. No, of course. We're human beings, we care. But I've been at this a long time, played against a lot of friends. This is obviously different. Clay Thompson gets just as much credit, for, building this as Steph Curry and myself. Not more. He is right at the center of that. As true as that was, Green tried to keep the moment of Thompson's return in perspective. In his mind, it was just another regular season game. It just wasn't that for me, Green said. It was a basketball game that we really wanted to win, that had implications more than just a regular season game, and that was about it. Green definitely had fun with it. He sank a clutch three-pointer in front of the Mavs bench midway through the third quarter, then twirled around and started chirping at the Dallas bench. Green later fed Moses Moody with a bounce pass in the fourth quarter that led to a dunk and a 104-103 Golden State lead. Warriors assistant coach, Chris DeMarco said he was playing like it was Game 7 of the NBA Finals, Warriors coach Steve Kerr said. But that's Draymond, he's the ultimate competitor. Green shared a few moments with Thompson, but it was all business for both men after tip-off. You don't win four championships together without that competitive fire, Green said. He has that, and we've known that forever. We have that, and he's known that forever. That's always going to happen. When you play against somebody you're close with, you want to beat them even more. It just raises that level of competition. So seeing him over there, you want to do great things, and that was kind of the mindset. In order to keep his emotions under control, Green did not come out to the court when the tribute video to Thompson played. Green had watched the video earlier and felt it best if he stayed behind when it was played for the crowd. I just didn't want to deal with those emotions because, A, there's a love for Clay that ain't going nowhere. But B, in watching his reruns, we're all a part of it, Green said. So then you start going into the emotions, oh, I remember that. In that playoff run, we had to do this overcome this. You start to go down those lanes, let him have that. That was a big thing for me. I just did not want the first time I saw his tribute video to be me standing out watching it. 
Steph the victor in battle of separated Splash Brothers. No figurative fratricide can be sweeter than it was Tuesday night at Chase Center, where at the end both brothers stand hugging each other. Stephen Curry had rescued the reeling warriors, surviving the attempted vengeance of longtime backcourt partner, Clay Thompson. The Warriors get the 120-117 victory over the Dallas Mavericks, with Splash Brother Steph getting the W and Splash Brother Clay taking the L literally. We did our pre-game scout, Warriors coach Steve Kerr said, and we went through the matchups and it's almost surreal saying, Steph, you got Clay. And Steph smiled as soon as he saw the matchups. It was, from 2011 to 12 through 2023 to 24, Steph and Clay side by side in the backcourt, slashing and gashing opposing defenses together, going to five consecutive All Star games together, going to five consecutive NBA finals together. Splash Brothers on the court, Blood Brothers in life. And now on opposite sides. Steph finished with 37 points, closing out the Mavericks in the fourth quarter. Clay finished with 22 points, including a couple three-pointers from which he took particular glee. Clay Thompson was brutally honest about Stephen Curry's dominant finish versus Mavericks. Tuesday began as a night for the Golden State Warriors to honor Clay Thompson in his first game back in the Bay Area as a member of the Dallas Mavericks. It ended with one splash brother witnessing firsthand what it's like to be on the opposing team when the other gets hot. Stephen Curry took over for the Warriors, scoring the team's final 12 points after the Mavericks jumped out to a 114-108 lead. Curry's torrid stretch resulted in the Warriors' 120-117 victory in the first game of group play in the 2024 NBA Cup. After the game, Thompson was asked about several topics, but one noteworthy comment was about being on the opposing team for one of Curry's red-hot stretches. As the Athletics' Anthony Slater detailed, Thompson was candid, admitting that it sucks to see from the other side. It hurts to be on the other side of one of his flurries, Thompson said of Curry. Guy got hot at the end and made some ridiculous shots. I've been on the other end, and it sucks. At age 36, Curry continues to show a level of dominance, which very few, if any, point guards have at that age. As stellar as his final stretch was, Curry was excellent throughout the night, scoring 37 points on 14 of 27 shooting while knocking down 5 of 12 attempts from three-point range. Thompson also had a strong night in the loss, finishing with 22 points on 7 of 17 shooting and connecting on 6 of 12 attempts from beyond the arc. While he rightfully received all of the love before his first game back in the Bay Area, it was Curry's performance that ultimately took center stage down the stretch in a game that featured a playoff atmosphere. Thompson and Curry will square off two more times this season, on Wednesday, February 12th, and Sunday, February 23rd. The next matchup will take place in Dallas, with the final meeting in the Bay Area. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Clay Thompson? Leave your opinion in the comments.